Welcome to Off the Shelf. I'm your host, Yvonne Wolf. Today, our special guest is John Kula, who works at the Glenview Senior Center. He has been a church organist for the last 50 years. Welcome, John. Thank you, Yvonne. So I'm tell, happy us to be a little, here. tell us a little bit about why you wrote the book on Afterlife. I think my dad inspired me when I went to visit him out west, uh, Sun City, and later in assisted living places, that as he got older and more immobile and uh, he's been religious all his life and I think as he grew nearer to the end realizing he wasn't going to live that much longer he, he was very concerned about the, the church's teachings on heaven and hell and particularly whether he was destined for one or the other yeah. he led a good life and yet like so many seniors who who have that the fear fear of God the mm -hmm. fear of where they're going to end up in afterlife, heaven, hell, purgatory. It's a little scary. It is. And he came to you because you have, a, you have training as a seminarian. Well, I, I had gone through training, uh, studying for the priesthood, mm -hmm. uh, through high school, Quigley North, and then through college several years. And I left after working in theology and philosophy. So I had uh, a great deal of background in, in that dealing with afterlife and church doctrine. Mm. So, and that's something I have pursued all you, my life. And you study also other religions, not just. Studied oh. other world religions mm -hmm. too, and, and what, they, what they think of in afterlife. So many of the major world religions do have an afterlife, not all, but many. Well, how do they, what do they tell people? Mm -hmm. Is there reincarnation, or mm -hmm. is it, is it uh, if you were bad, you were condemned for all eternity? Mm -hmm. If you're good, I mean, what does it take? Right, and why so many religions all have an afterlife, right? All have a... All, all but one major religion has, has an afterlife. Mm -hmm. And so, but each has a different idea. But the ideas are, are humanly based. You see, well, what does heaven look like? Well, if you bring it up on, on, uh, on Google Images, well, you see clouds and you see Light and lights, beautiful mountain scenery, plants, gardens, clouds in the sky. We really have no idea what, what it's going to be like. If we approach afterlife as, as a state uh, without a body, without any of our five senses, w really what is it? And there are books written on, I was there, I was, at he I was in heaven and I came back. Well, your body was still here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so how do, how do you perceive this wonderful place? And second of all, why would you come back? Mm. If this is the greatest happiness, you know, why would... So there, there are a lot of questions that, that came up, and, and I tried to give comfort to Dad by telling him what, what I had known and what I believed, but the more I talked about it, mm -hmm. the more in my own mind I began to question what, what, really, what really is important mm. to know about a life well lived, yeah. regardless of what your faith is, whether it's Catholic, Protestant, Chinese or right. Buddhism uh -huh. or Judaism, what's really important in this life? And you, you say it's important to remember the subtitle of your book is Keeping the Faith. Keeping the Faith, Rethinking the Myths. I did not want to uh, alienate any, any religious group or world religion. I wanted to expose all of them to the things they share in common. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't preach in here, but I give ideas. I have hundreds of quotes from leaders in all the world religions. Mm. I have many quotes from leading theologians, philosophers going back to Aquinas, Augustine. Mm. Uh, so not just contemporary, but... Right, a reference of the Bhagavad Gita and the Torah and, and, and the Muslim uh, Torah, and they all have something Quran. to say, uh -huh. the Quran. They all have something to say, but it's all humanly based. It's all hypothetical. I see. In this book, you say it's a big question mark. It's a huge. If everyone dies, which we will, what happens? Is there a possibility that we all live forever? And I ask people, as we get on in, later in the book, is God only interested in, in us on planet Earth? Mm. What about other solar systems? Right. What about other cosmics? How does God make his presence known to people in galaxies far away, mm -hmm. and, and the, uh, they, they say, and this is where scientists have, have an inner track, mm -hmm. where they say the universe is so large. As Einstein said, I understand part of what the universe is, but to me, 
the very breath of it is totally inconceivable to me and mm. to mankind. We will never, never really understand it. Right. It's too big for us. So, so when you start to listen to people in where they, they take on a cosmic element to their discussions. Now, a scientist may not necessarily say, I believe in God, because he might be sanctioned by, by other men in, in his field. You know, he, he might do it as a personal belief or saying, I do believe that there is a ah, belief. They, yes, they may never say it's personal, mm -hmm. but they'll say it as a cosmic force. Right, right, or a superior force, or a being, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the Star Wars legacy, they, they had a wonderful world. They never mention a god. Mm -hmm. But they do say when you're struggling to gain inner strength mm -hmm. and you look for an external source, yeah. someone might say, may the force yeah. be with you. Right. And that's perhaps more an idea of what God may be like. Mm -hmm. He's a very busy God, obviously, with, right. with eight billion people here. And if there is life on other planets and other universes, right. billions of stars in our galaxy, yeah. and now they say there are at least three billion galaxies. I mean, yeah. it's just... It's, it's just so astronomical. It's hard it is to imagine. And that really opens, it opened my mind to mm -hmm. the whole discussion. Yeah. So when I began very narrowly talking about heaven, mm -hmm. hell, purgatory, limbo, and, and uh, thing, things of that nature, they're, they're really very small in, in the whole cosmic scheme of, scheme of things. Well, let's talk about your experience um, publishing the book. And you, you have some tips for our viewers, right? I was, I was fairly naive about publishing the book. The, my main concern was thinking of Dad and thinking of the many seniors that I work with yes, who all do. share the same concern. Yes, yes. Well, what is afterlife? About? Is it a is it huge dramatic or is it like Kubler-Ross might say? It's, it's passing through uh, an invisible curtain, mm. walking through a curtain to an afterlife. And um, it, it, I, was, I was just confused. I didn't know where to go. And I didn't know how to organize the book. I see. Yes, how do you organize this? You know, so I, I would pick a topic, heaven. Okay, Dad, that was a major concern. What is hell all about? And I would research going how far back was there heaven? And even before that, gods. There were gods in ancient, yes, in ancient really, mythology. Yeah. And they were always fighting each other. And they were always fighting men. And somehow this, this has been a part of theology through, through the centuries. Yes, yes. There's, the, there's still, as, as I attended a lecture at the University of Chicago given by Hans Kung from the University of Tübingen in West Germany, and he, he said, there is a God. Why does there have to be an anti-God? Hmm. Why is there God and Satan? Does, why is there good? And evil. Why? Why are they opposing forces? Dichotomies. Uh -huh. Dichotomies. You know, does this has this always existed? I mean, the, the, do people need a god to behave themselves? Mm. Yes. The, you know, the you fear may of say there are atheists who say, well, we well, there is a moral order that just comes. Augustine would say naturally to man, or Aquinas would say, man is basically good. Mm. But then you get into problems when you have uh, church history that says the whole Adam and Eve story, I think, was the start of some horrible beliefs and doctrines because right away it placed God as giving the orders, mm -hmm. do this, first and order. Punisher. Yeah. It wasn't, hello, Adam, hello, mm -hmm. Eve, I'm yeah. God, I love you. Mm -hmm. yes. Those words are never mentioned. Yes. I love you. It was... This is my commandment, and I'm telling you, look at that tree. See that tree? Mm -hmm. That's a tree of knowledge. Don't eat any fruit from it. Mm -hmm. Now, today, teachers would, be, would love to have their students pursue knowledge <laughs> in the same way that, <laughs> wow, I'd like to know everything about what I'm, what I'm doing here. Right. You're but, discouraged yes, to, to learn something new. So you were discouraged. Yeah. So the first act was a, a command for an act of obedience, mm -hmm. and don't want you to know too much. Yes. Yes. Those are really lessons that can be gleaned yes. if one starts cr thinking critically yes. about the whole creation story. And then so later on, when St. When so Augustine said uh, he created the doctrine of original sin, he said when Adam and Eve disobeyed, yes. that was a mortal, what became known as a original sin yes. that would taint all of humanity 
for the rest of life in this planet. Right, right. So you're, you're experiencing publishing. Tell us a little bit about that. You said that it was, you're, na you're naive about it. Terribly right? naive because oh. I didn't really have... Oh, how did you find a publisher? Yeah. Uh, my brother-in-law's wife had published a book uh, on Hollywood Lives mm. and, and my wife, Karen, encouraged me to call her and see what she did to get an idea of publishers and, 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 and how to promote your book. So I, I was thinking about that. I called her and she gave me some great ideas uh, as far as marketing goes. Mm -hmm. But finding a publisher, I, I was sitting in a do doctor's office in the waiting room and I'm, I'm leafing through a Reader's Digest. Nice, innocent, wonderful. Re and there was a full page ad for Life Rich Publishing, the family publisher. Mm. We promote books on health, family living, uh, wellness in life, and the important, what's important in life. And this was a good publisher for you because you, you didn't want to go with an established Christian publisher. I didn't, I didn't because uh, I think a small book, who's going to know about it? You know, if you take it to a major publisher, yeah. Kula? Who is Kula? <laughs> Throw it out. And, you know, when I eventually showed my book to a, uh, a critic in one of the newspapers, I mailed, who is this guy? And he said he just threw it out. Mm. He said, I don't have time for this. Oh, my. So you found that marketing a book is a, is a bigger, bigger process than it's, you thought, it's right? A, it's a big thought process. It's a large financial risk. How is it a financial risk? Well, if, if, you, if you write a book for the reason I wrote it is to, is to help people like my dad yes. think about afterlife yes. of all faiths, all religions, mm -hmm. and to think not just globally, but if you open your eyes to the, the world as a stage, to the whole universe as a stage, yeah. it, it creates a new, a new feeling about God and how, how, how important it is to have a, a larger view yeah. of getting along on this planet. Yes. And marketing is an expensive enterprise, you say, right? Yes. So if you, if you go with a small publisher, mm -hmm. they were able to, to look at the book right away. Now, mm -hmm. they, don't make, they don't have any opinions on your book. They really don't read it. They, they might read your preface and to get some idea for the quotes that they use on the back cover to promote your book. Yes. Now, okay. if you wanted to get someone famous to promote your book on the back cover, mm -hmm. it's going to cost you. Okay, really? You, 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 have, you can't talk to Carl Sagan for a scientist oh. or, or the Pope. You've got to go through the publisher, mm -hmm. and then they hire or they give money to whoever writes this wonderful endorsement. Wow. Those are not free. So every recommendation it goes through the publisher. Okay, so New York Times recommends those are all paid. Those are paid, yeah. Wow. So when a person sees, if you want your book in the New Yorker magazine, yes. uh, they say, wow, this is a great place. Millions of people read the New Yorker. Those are paid uh, spots. Paid spots. spots. And you've oh, got to, through the publisher, hires someone to give a good voice to your book. If you want to go through your local newspaper, and get it, you've got to go through the publisher. Oh, and they, yeah. they arrange for the newspapers to, to cover it. So Have you been on Glenview Lantern? Maybe we should try. That would be very nice. Sending you through there, <laughs> our local. That's a great paper. idea. But if you want to, you know, the, the thing is, if you want to market your book and you, if you want to make it financially successful, you, you've got to be prepared to spend a lot of money to do it. I see. Now, if you just want to print a little soft cover booklet and publish it to your friends, that's what I thought. When, they call, when marketing called me from Life Rich, they said, well, how are you going to market your book? I said, how am I going to market? This is a wonderful topic. This yeah. concerns everyone on the planet. I yeah. wish I could mail a copy to everyone <laughs> living here. Yeah. And I made the mistake of thinking that many people would be interested in mm -hmm. reading about it. And it's, it's not necessarily that they're not interested, but they don't know where to find out about this book. Yes, you, now you mentioned um, it's very important that the bookstore categorize your book. Yes. Correctly. Right. I was going to take my book right to, to like a Barnes and Noble, say, yes. here's my book. I'd like to know if you could carry a few copies. And they'll say, oh, this is your book. Let's see it. Let me put the title of the book into our database. It's not there. Mm. I said, it's not there. But the publisher said, you know, you could sell your book through, they say, you have to be registered with what's called ISBN. 
Uh huh. Yes, ISBN. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and that's a book return policy agreement that you sign. Okay. And that can be anywhere eight hundred to a thousand dollars, just to have your book added to the database. Oh my. Okay. Otherwise, no bookseller, even a, um, a local bookstore, mm. yes, will not carry a book unless it's listed in ISBN. Okay. So and, I, I and had to your purchase book? that. Yeah. And I had to purchase that. Okay. And and even when you purchase a book, it doesn't mean and it goes into the data. It doesn't mean the store is going to carry it or even advertise it. So I went to Barnes and Noble, and I think it's a wonderful, wonderful bookstore. Like Borders was wonderful. Yeah. I showed them a copy. I said, "Could you carry three books on the shelf?" Yeah. They said, "Yes, we'll do it for you. We'll do it. We're more than happy. You can even come in, and we'll put you on the local author's display rack and end it, end yeah. rack or something, end yes, cap." Yes and you can come in and autograph those. I said, that's great. Now the problem is you, you've got to establish the right um, category for your book. So this is a book on afterlife. It can be fiction, it can be uh, philosophy, it can yeah, be philosophy. science fiction, it can actually go anywhere. I really meant it to be in world religion, so to speak. But right, I, I right. realized that it would start with, with my, you have to start somewhere when you write a book. Yeah. Some viewpoint, you yeah. just don't write pretending to, I'm not an expert in anything. Anything. So I needed a category, and it was really about spirituality and, and how to live a good life and how to think about the next life yes. in those terms. So I wanted it under spirituality and religion and Christianity. Yes. Now, the publisher inadvertently put it under supernatural. Now, occult, I may have asked right? as a fourth option, spirit, supernatural. Yeah. I can't fault them for that. But it also ended up in the occult yes. category, which is oh about my. as far as you can. <laughs> that's what I was talking or writing against. Yes, yes. So that's why the book initially did not uh, take off. In the, uh, yeah, in the right direction. For that reason. And then the other way, if you want to promote a book, is to go to local bookstores. Now, they're happy to promote local authors, right? It's great. So I approached uh, one bookstore in Winnetka, and that's a wonderful bookstore. You can go there and browse forever. So I went there and I said, I have this book. Would you be willing to, to at least carry a few copies and get the reaction of people? And they said, even better, we're having a new local authors um, opening, you oh, know, okay. a yeah. special day we yeah. were each new author could set up a, a eight foot table, put their books, little signage, mm -hmm. and people could come in. We would invite our, the whole area to come in, and well, at, at the last minute, it was canceled. Oh, that's I, too bad. I, I, what? He said, well, lack of interest, oh. lack of interest. He said, but, but John, we were, we were willing, and the funny thing is, is I had to perform at a concert for a school that day of the, and I said, oh my God, two things Can't going on at once. So. But he called me before it was canceled, okay. and he says, it's been canceled. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's been a lack of interest, but we would have been happy to have a table set up with you, even if you weren't here. Oh. I said, God bless you. Yes. And the other, the other, another but, major book store in, uh, can I mention a suburb or not? Sure. Naperville? Uh, yes. I said, I have a new book. I'm, I'm a local author, and I'm mm -hmm. excited about at least you're seeing it, getting it on the shelf. I said, well, you're local, huh? Well, you have to send us a copy of the book first. Okay. Unlike when that guy says, great, mm -hmm. good subject. Uh, we have to see it. Our committee has to look at it, approve it, and of course, it's a free book to them. I see. I said, okay. Uh, they said, are you a local author? I said, yes, yes, I'm from Mount <laughs> Prospect. And they said, that's not local. Oh. We're in Naperville. Mm -hmm. You're not a local author. Who, who knows you in Naperville? Well, at the moment, I couldn't think of anyone in Haverville who knew me. Well, the great place for your book is the Glenview Library. Yes. So I did go to the, um, amazingly, one of the, the women in my Glenview Senior Chorus um, requested. I said, they said, how do you get your, how can I read your book? I said, go to the library. Well, at that time, Glenview didn't have it. Hmm. So she, I said, request it. It's yeah. just, John wrote a book called... And at reflections on afterlife. Yeah. Could you get a copy? Yes, we'll get it. Oh. They are very sympathetic with their patrons. Yeah. If there's a book you'd like to get and they're not aware of it, mm -hmm. they'll look at it, look at it on Amazon here. Mm -hmm. and say, yes, I glad to. So she saw it, they got it, she read it, said, This is a wonderful book. And then the Glenview carried a copy of the book 
Uh, I went to the Mount Prospect Library as well. Mm -hmm. They carried the book, and they even put me on the local author's shelf. Yes. And it was a wonderful idea. I had no intent, no idea, though, that stores are under such tremendous pressure. Yes, bookstores. Uh, and they have to choose from thousands of books every few months from Isbin to say mm -hmm. what book they're going to promote mm -hmm. that will make them money. Well, they have a tight business to run. Uh, there's not a lot of <laughs> people the profit buying margins books from are the thin, local. And yes. A great many of the books that they do write are returned. Yes. Yes. And when you, when you learn that in the United States, there are 900 books published mm. every day. Wow. Now, booksellers, bookstores, they don't want to get in 900 <laughs> books, multiple copies. It's bad enough that they have to return a great deal of their inventory. Right, right. And uh, unfortunately, it's, it's either burned or destroyed. Mm. But now Amazon is willing to take, take on a lot of the inventory because they have infinite resources, warehouse storage. So they will take them on and carry them forever, which is I good see. for me. So you, so you like to get some feedback on your books, right? You I would, you absolutely, have, yes. And you have gotten some? Uh, people talk to me in person, again, meeting with friends. And because I work in, in religiously sensitive situations, um, it's difficult to make clear that my book is a positive approach to... Not a critical. Yeah, it's not right. critical. Um, when I say I study critical thinking and I offer seminars in critical thinking, yes. critical thinking is positive. Mm -hmm. It cannot mm -hmm. be negative or it's not true critical. It's thinking in a way that you, you look at what you believe mm -hmm. and what you think and examine your own mind to say, yeah. how much of this do I know for a fact is true? Mm -hmm. and, and ask questions. And ask questions, yourself. absolutely. And that's what reflections are, right? Absolutely. On my dresser at home, I have a six-inch high question mark in brass. <laughs> and it's there every morning when I wake up. What do I know? As a famous saying from Rumsfeld, he says, there are things that I know, and I know that I know them. There are things that I don't know, mm -hmm. but I know that I don't know them. Mm -hmm. But he says, the real danger is there are things that I don't know about, that I don't know, no, right. and that I don't know that they even exist. Yes, we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, in critical thinking, that's, uh, you know, there are many natural disasters. You could talk about Challenger and Columbia if you mm -hmm. want to get into the science. So sad. Those could have been avoided. Those could have been potentially avoided if they had known what the questions were to even yeah. ask. So I'm applying yeah. that same strategy to religion. Mm -hmm. What do the great thinkers believe? Mm -hmm. uh, not just theologians, but philosophers, mm -hmm. people on the street. And, you know, what do they think? We, we hear about the Christians being, uh, and the Colosseum being martyred for. Yeah. And yes. there's two of them eating chickpeas, which is a popular popcorn at Coliseums. Uh -huh. And one turns to the other and says, I'm a Christian myself, but I'm not a fanatic about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm reading, I'm reading, now I'm reading 30 years later in, in the Chicago Catholic. There is an article where they interview people on the streets. What do you, what do you believe about heaven and hell? Do mm -hmm. they exist in this? And how, how, how does that guide your life? Well, one of them says, well, I am a Christian. But, but I'm not a fanatic about Christianity. <laughs> I said, oh my God. So I had saved the initial cartoon, which is a full page cartoon 30 years ago. I yes. saved it. And then I saved the copy of that on the street interview. People are, are really, I believe, anxious to know what lies ahead. The real trick in marketing is to get out there and, and connect. Again, if you, want to, if you want people to read the book, you, you can't just do it locally. You have to really Mm. expand and yeah. you need uh, you need the financial backing behind you to mm. to, to even make it a make make it to profitable. Explore that. Yeah. So John, did your book was your book published in time for your father? No, unfortunately dad died before before it was published, just shortly before. And but fortunately I, I didn't, you know, meet with him. We had our conversations and I hope I, I put him at ease. Yes. In the process of writing have always stick with you, that is with him, that you yes, see the book. Yes, yes. The, the book was entirely positive mm. for him, and I hope, I hope it would be for other people reading this. You've got to really hold on to your hat when you're reading it, because it takes up serious issues, mm. and it, you may question your beliefs, but mm. you, may, you may 
get rid of some of these old mythologies that still still exist in, in, in your mind that mm -hmm. may are may hindering more yes. than anything else. Well, they're human. Very thoughts. human. And stop yeah. thinking of maybe heaven as a reward, mm -hmm. hell as a punishment. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. that's pretty mm -hmm. severe. Right. Reward and punishment is always... Eternal, eternity is a long time. I mean, there are yes. people who don't know what to do on a rainy Saturday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> that's right. And now they're coupled with... It's hard to imagine. Well, thank you, John. Thank you, Yvonne. I appreciate your having me here. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Join us next time on Off the Shelf.